What's going on, everyone? So one of the strange things that the San Antonio Spurs did in the NBA draft was trade away Rob Dillingham, right? Spurs, I thought, had an excellent draft. I thought even in the second round, I thought that they got two very Spurs-type players. I think Stephon Castle is huge for the Spurs. I think he is a real foundation piece going forward. I am really high on Stephon Castle. I think Castle, we could look back in three or four years, and he may end up being the best player in this draft. Um, he has that kind of upside and potential. I also really love that he's a guy that's willing to do the dirty work. But the Spurs desperately need a point guard, like a real point guard that can, in particular, set up Victor Wimanyama, right? It was incredibly frustrating just watching the Spurs, and it was like Victor would just get phased out all the time, and it was like he might as well not even be on the court on the offensive side of things, right? So you really need somebody that can kind of get him in position and, and properly run and initiate the offense. And the Spurs ended up drafting Rob Dillingham, and it was like, Perfect, right? You got some speed. Hey, right? you the guy that has a ton of just just upside and could be a really nice piece for the Spurs. Not really what you think of like a Spurs point guard, but still a guy that I think could be very, you know, he's kind of in that shape of the modern point guard, guy that could really just make for a, an interesting pair next to Vassal or, you know, if you go with Castle at two, whatever they end up doing, right? But then they ended up trading him. And they didn't trade him for something that really made sense. It was, you know, a 2030 pick swap and a 2031 unprotected first from a team in Minnesota that may or may not be good then, and you may or may not be good then. Right? It just it didn't make sense for a team that Victor Wimanyama himself has talked about how he wants to win now. Right. And he wants to start, he doesn't want to wait around. And now would be as good of a time as ever to kind of push your chips to the table a little bit because Victor has been so good out the gate, right? Like Victor is so cheap right now. I mean, he's the best value in the league right now. And it's like capitalize on that while you can, because he's going to get the bag soon. Then with the new CBA and everything, it's just, it's going to make things really tough where if you already have a contender and you're already winning championships, right? When he gets paid, if you're in that second tax, who cares? You're winning championships, right? But it was just strange, Unless the Spurs are planning a trade, right? Now, look, there's been new developments since then, right? You had DeJounte Murray get traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. DeJounte Murray was kind of murmured to have links to the Spurs. Um, you know, I think that that was just more, you know, he's a former Spur. Spurs need a point guard, right? Like that kind of thing. But now that Atlanta has traded DeJounte, and they are clearly hitting the reset button, there's a lot of talks of, like, Trey potentially headed to the San Antonio Spurs, right? Because the Spurs own all of Atlanta's picks. So they could potentially use those picks to go and get Trey on, and you're basically just giving them their picks back. Um, however, there is an argument to be made that those picks may end up being very valuable for a team that's tanking, for a team that's trying to rebuild, that you may end up getting lottery picks. Right, like, what if you get Cooper Flag, you know, in next year's draft because Atlanta ends up winning number one again or something? Right, like, it's just, I, I, it, 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 odd, and it's one of those things where Trey, is he really a Spurs guy? Is he a guy that makes sense for the Spurs? Right, that's kind of the big question. But Trey alongside Victor Wembanyama, I think would just be, it'd be great, right? Because if anybody can. Victor in the right position and really maximize him, it would be Trey. He's one of, if not the best playmakers in the league currently. Talk about a guy that the last three years has averaged 25 and 10. Right? So there's no doubt about that. However, he doesn't make sense for the move that the Spurs made. Right? Because again, if Atlanta really is rebuilding and they're trading both of their point guards and they just got a young Dyson Daniels. They have Jalen Johnson, and they just got, you know, the, the number one pick in the draft in Rizache, and, you know, it's just, you, you start looking at the roster, it's like, well, they could really use a point guard. So the fact that the Spurs traded Rob Dillingham kind of leads me to believe that they're not going to go after Trey because Atlanta probably would have had a lot of use for a Rob Dillingham, right? He, he could have been their point guard for now in the future. So to me... 
it's got to be Darius Garland, right? I think the Spurs are waiting around. And look, there have been heavy reports that Garland is the Spurs' number one target. Like, that's who the Spurs want, right? He's young. He's talented. This was an all-star level point guard before DeJounte Murray got there. He was emerging and looking like he was going to be the next great point guard in the league. Then the Cavs went and traded for uh, Donovan Mitchell, and it just kind of, you know, neutralized Garland. And so the the word is that if Donovan Mitchell ends up opting to, to sign an extension, that Darius Garland is going to request a trade and try to force his way out. Right, he loves Cleveland. He, he, you know, he'd love to stay in Cleveland, but it's just it's not best for his skill set. Is basically what the word is. And Darius Garland, you know, going to the Spurs makes a world of sense. And if you're a, if you're a Cavs team, you don't have a need for Dillingham, right? Like you, you just the the problem you just had were basically two point guards. Do you really want to go get another point guard, especially when you're going to sign? Donovan Mitchell for another, you know, four or five years? Like, no, right? So that didn't make sense. But what would have made sense is to get as many assets and picks and things like that as you possibly can. You know, maybe get some of Atlanta picks. Maybe get those Timberwolves picks that could maybe have some value because Minnesota, maybe they're bad in a couple years. And now if you're a Cleveland team, now you can now you have a package that if another star becomes available that makes sense, now you can go and make that move to go get that other star. Pair that other star alongside Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley, and we'll see if they keep Jared Allen and all that stuff, right? So that, like, the move that the Spurs made makes a lot more sense if the target is Darius Garland. And so I imagine that the Spurs have some type of plan in place, right? That the the idea is to go and trade for that point guard. That they basically stacked up and are, are loading up on picks so that way they can make a move to go get a more veteran guy. Especially if the Spurs are looking to kind of expedite the process, Darius Garland would be a perfect balance in that. Because again, he is still incredibly young, right? Like he's as young as some of the guys drafted in this year's draft, right? So, and he's already proven. So he's a guy that could come in and be an, you now you got an all-star level point guard alongside Victor Wimanyama, aside Vassal, aside Castle, aside, you know, and now you're just kind of, now you're just looking for uh, either a power forward or a center that could play alongside Victor, right? And now, now you're in good shape because now at that point you could go, like you said, Garland, Vassal, uh, Castle, and then Victor Wimanyama, and then whatever, go get whoever, go get a center or, you know, a power forward or something that you can kind of slot and slide alongside Victor. Maybe you're working out some other type of trade um, you know, or kind of just a stopgap guy until somebody gets better, right? But Darius Garland, I think, is what the Spurs are kind of putting everything together for. I do. I think that they're, I think, because the word is, is that Donovan Mitchell is expected to sign the extension, right? That he's going to sign a new extension. So I think that they are banking that, that, that those reports and those rumors are true. And if he signs that new extension, guess who becomes available, right? Darius Garland. And yes, there are reports that, ah, oh, the Cavs don't expect to, to trade any of the core four and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that, that all sounds nice until everyone starts crying and wants out. And then all of a sudden, now you're in a position where you got to do that. So I think more likely than not that, yes, he ends up, um, he ends up potentially being a spur. I could see the Spurs kind of going all in to get Darius Garland. And I think Darius Garland makes the most sense of what's known to be available for the Spurs. But as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you agree that, like, yeah, go get Darius Garland. He's the guy. That's the answer. Um, now, that th clearly they're making moves to try to prepare themselves for Darius Garland. Do you think no? Stay away from Darius Garland. He's not the answer. Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. I enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. 
not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.